In a previous video, we created a controller with an endpoint mapping all the way to home, which is the slash or the root endpoint. And we have it returning the string start, which marries it up to an HTML page that we see here, which is quite straightforward. We also created a DTO called specimen. In this video, we're going to populate a sample specimen object in our controller, and then we're going to pass it over to our HTML page, and we're going to have that HTML page render the current state of that controller. If we look at this HTML page right now, it looks fairly straightforward, and it also looks like raw HTML. Well, one interesting thing about Spring Boot with Timeleaf is that Timeleaf is a rendering engine that will do some server-side rendering on this page. In other words, maybe do some enhancements like pull in some data or pull in some other page pages. And then it will produce the final page and send that down to the browser. So yes, it's HTML, but with some options to do some server-side rendering. To do that, we need to import the correct library up at the top, essentially a namespace, where a namespace is kind of like a category or a grouping of HTML tags. So there are special server-side HTML tags that we're going to use here, and they're in a library we're going to call th. Let's start by referencing that namespace, XML ns colon th equals, and then HTTP colon slash slash www.timeleaf. Get the quotes back into balance there. That looks pretty good. Now we can use this th tag. Now, just like normal HTML, we have our head up here, which is essentially meta information that won't render. And then we have the body down here, which is where we put any text we want the user to see. So let's add a p tag, a paragraph tag. But take a look at this. There's a special attribute we get to use here, th colon. And then there's several kind of sub attributes off of that. One of them is text. So th text, and this is one of our server side rendering components, equal sign, double quote, and then within the double quotes, let's do dollar sign open curly, and then specimen, and then close curly, and then we'll simply terminate this tag as a singleton tag, just like so. So you see we have a paragraph tag that's referencing something called specimen. Now what we need to do is create a specimen object and essentially push it into that HTML page. So I've gone back to the controller. We know we already have our specimen class. So I'm going to say specimen, specimen equals new specimen. And we'll just put in a little bit of data to populate this specimen. So specimen dot set description. We'll assume this is a pawpaw and we'll say pawpaw fruit season, something like that. And then specimen dot set latitude. Go with 39.74, and then specimen set longitude. And for that, we'll go with minus 84.51, and specimen dot set specimen ID, and 1003, and oh, we'll put that in quotes, sorry. And we could keep going, specimen dot set plant ID. We could say maybe 84, something like that again. Now we need to take this populated specimen and make it available to our HTML page. This is fairly straightforward, just a couple of steps we need to do. Number one, we need to change the method signature of this index endpoint. So we'll say model, model. So we're essentially adding a parameter. And with the magic of Spring, this is going to get populated for us simply based on it being present there in the method signature. It feels kind of weird, but it does work. Now we'll say model dot add attribute, and we'll pass in our specimen. Save, and we're in good shape. Once I run the application and load the browser, here's what we see. We see the specimen with those attributes that we specified. We hard-coded them, but nonetheless, we understand what's going on. So we have our plant ID, specimen ID, so on and so forth, all of these attributes. Now, one question is, how did it know to print this out in this format? And what happens is it runs the toString method on an object if it needs to represent that object as a string. And here's a case where we've essentially taken an object right here. We've said we want to represent this as a string. So we go back to that class, and uh, that's weird. There's no toString method. Well, but remember, this is Lombok and we have it annotated with that data. And so that gives it a default to string that gives it this handy formatting that we see here. 
if you remember the days before Lombok, a lot of times if you did a two string, you would get something like this by default, a package name, a class name, and then a hex number that follows. So uh, certainly this is a bit better. So one more thing I'm going to do, because this is starting essentially a new chapter on UI, I am going to make a new branch. We're going to call this uh, Timeleaf UI. And I will put all of the UI changes into this branch. So I hope this video has been helpful, and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.